Hey everyone, welcome to the Frugal Kitchen. Today I'm making chocolate chip chickpea flour cookies um, because I ran out of cookies and I am the kind of person who constantly needs cookies in my house all the time. Um, this recipe is also low in sugar. So we're going to start with one cup of chickpeas. I'm going to turn that into flour. The recipe actually calls for one and two tablespoons of chickpea flour, but I had exactly one cup of chickpeas left. So uh, we're going to maybe wonder and think about where we're going to get this extra two tablespoons of flour. This is what the dry chickpeas look like after the Vitamix has turned it into flour. And if you make a lot of flour from scratch, I do highly recommend the Vitamix. I think it's the strongest um, blender on the market right now. Um, we got ours secondhand on eBay, so you can get these pretty cheap. So the extra two tablespoons, I'm going to turn um, some rolled oats into oat flour. I didn't want to put wheat flour in this recipe. Um, just in case someone is gluten intolerant and they wanted to copy my recipe exactly or almost exactly know how the flour works and um, how it comes out. Um, I like using this kind of flour on occasion because um, chickpea flour and oat flour are both lower on the glycemic scale than wheat flour. Chickpea flour is quite, quite low. The glycemic index of that is 28 and wheat flour is 85 so quite a big difference in blood sugar spikes and that is what the oat flour looks like when it's done and I'm just gonna mix these two together so that um, they're all homogenized I don't even know the right term but they're all like well combined And I just wanted to show you a quick shot of me cleaning the blender. It's really easy to clean a Vitamix. You just put some soap and water into it and then turn the blender on all the way and uh, let it run as long as you want, depending on what you stuck inside that made it dirty to begin with. Now we're going to add a third cup of cocoa powder. I love keeping co cocoa powder on hand in the kitchen. Um, I think it's because I like chocolate so much and it's um, fairly inexpensive and I like that you can just add sugar and, and make it chocolate. I kind of wish you could just turn cocoa powder and sugar into chocolate chips, but I think you are missing the butter in the chocolate chip that actually makes it harden. So, I mean, I would honestly love to make my own sugar-free chocolate chips, but it's kind of difficult. And then we'll add three quarters teaspoon of baking soda. Then a quarter teaspoon of salt. Go ahead and whisk or stir that together until it's fully combined and then set it aside. This is the way I made this recipe. I combined the dry ingredients and then the wet ingredients later, but the original recipe just says to put everything in one bowl. So you could probably go ahead and do it that way without much problem. Um, I did have to melt a, a stick of butter. It called for a half a cup of plant-based margarine which um, we do have, but we had some butter to use up as well to kind of get rid of it, so I used that instead. I melted that in the microwave for maybe 20 seconds and then stuck it in the stand mixer to smoosh it down, make it a little bit more liquid. So the recipe called for half a cup of coconut sugar or brown sugar, and as you may know from watching some other dessert videos of mine, I prefer to make my own brown sugar because it's... Um, cheaper to do it that way if you want sugar-free or low sugar. So 
Uh, I was almost out of mar of molasses, um, which is what I used to make the brown sugar, and I I was kind of panicking. I think I had a tablespoon left, to be honest, and I wasn't sure if that was going to be enough. Um, I wasn't supposed to go grocery shopping till the next day, and I try to not go for random ingredients um, if I can help it. So I I put what I could into the bowl, um, and then. I ended up microwaving it a little bit. Um, I think I microwaved it for 20 seconds to try to make it a little bit looser. Then I added half a cup of sugar and uh, to do that um, in a low carb way I did a quarter cup of sucralose and then a quarter cup of regular white refined sugar. Then I mix the sugar and molasses by hand. Um, and as you may remember from other uh, dessert recipes, I also have never measured the molasses I use when I um, make sugar. I, I think it should be two tablespoons to a cup or maybe half a cup. I honestly, I don't know, which is why I wasn't sure I was going to have enough for this recipe. Uh, additionally, I think it's a lot easier to make molasses your, or sorry brown sugar yourself if you squeeze it by hand instead of using like a spoon um, it just I think that the hand the squeezing motion kind of lets the molasses soak into the sugar a lot better and then here is where I had microwaved it and I, I the jar was kind of hot it was a little bit annoying to try to touch the jar so I'm trying to get a little bit extra molasses in here although you can tell it is dark enough in my opinion that looks like light brown sugar and the recipe didn't really specify and honestly I have not really seen a huge difference in recipes when I've used the wrong kind of brown sugar anyway so um, I got a tiny bit more as you can see on the spoon it wasn't it wasn't a lot I was not as successful as I had wanted to be but I was really pleased with myself that I miraculously had enough I actually told my husband who's Jewish, I said, oh my God, it's like Hanukkah. I have exactly enough molasses for the sugar to make brown sugar. And he laughed at me and um, I was probably, good thing we're not Orthodox because that would have probably been a little disrespectful. Um, sorry, this part is off camera. I did not realize you couldn't see the sugar going into the bowl there, but I'm just pouring it into the stand mixer. Um, and then if you do it this way, do make sure you scrape the sides of the bowl because molasses will get stuck there and you could end up needing that molasses to soak into the rest of your sugar mixture. Then I went ahead and combined the sugar and butter. Now we're going to be adding the vanilla. It says one teaspoon of vanilla extract. There was also an optional one teaspoon of espresso powder or instant coffee, but I had um, already mixed all my coffee with creamer, so that wasn't going to work for me. Now the unusual thing about this recipe was there was no egg replacer and I was kind of surprised about that it did say to put three tablespoons of water in the mixture and I was like that's almost exactly the same amount of um, like one egg replacer when you use it with cornstarch um, the egg replacer I always use is one tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with three tablespoons of water mix it separately first then throw it into your stand mixer with the other ingredients so I think this recipe should maybe have cornstarch in it as well, along with that water, to give you a real kind of binding quality. Um, then I decided to add the dry ingredients um, half at a time to the wet ingredients after they were mixed together. Then dump in the rest of the dry ingredients and mix well. Now, if you don't know, the reason I decided to do the dry ingredients separately from the wet ingredients was because literally every cookie recipe, well, almost every cookie recipe I see has you do it that way. Um, and being that this one had a lot of substitutions or, um, you know, not, regu not regular flour, not regular sugar, I just wanted to make it as cookie-like as I could, and I didn't want to take any chances throwing everything together in a bowl. 
So that's what it, the dough looks like when it's done. It's nice and thick. It's got a good texture. I'm just going to mix it again. I scraped it down from the sides of the bowl, but I wanted to give it another quick mix. If you decide to use oat flour instead of chickpea flour, I do recommend you let the dough sit for about 20 minutes or so because um, with the exception of instant oatmeal, oats need to soak up the wet ingredients to really kind of bulk up the texture of your cookie. So you want to make it, um, just let it sit for a little bit so the especially the, your butter substitute can kind of like absorb into the, the dough. And then it's said to throw in a quarter cup of chocolate chips. I have sugar-free chocolate chips. If you've got vegan chocolate chips and that's how uh, your diet is, that's fine too. There's really not really a difference cooking-wise how um, any kind of chocolate chip works. They all seem to be the same when they come out of the oven. So now we're going to throw the dough onto the cookie sheets and the recipe said it made 20 cookies and I said to myself, no, this will not do because I am such a baker that I, I get really weird if there's not a bake, not, not really a baker's dozen because that's 13, but if there's not a dozen, it has to be in quantities of 12. I'll even take six for me to feel like I've I've got a recipe that works. I don't like random numbers in my recipes. Things have to be even. I don't know why that is. And, you know, I didn't actually have enough dough, so I took some from the other cookies, made the cookies smaller, because I thought, you know, whatever. I, I, need, I need this number of cookies because that's how I eat, and that's just a weird tra trait of mine. If you like what you see so far, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We recently reached um, 100 subscribers, and I'm really happy about that. Um, it may be a little bit higher than that by the time this video goes up, because I am doing them about a month in advance. So um, sorry about that. Timing is off, but I just wanted to make sure I could take a break if I needed to. So um, one way... Um, I make sure cookies stay cookie shaped when I'm doing fake sugar and sometimes even not real, not wheat flour will, will require this, but you want to smush them down a little bit into flat, flatter discs. And an easy way to get them like this is to wet your hands with some water. It kind of absorbs or evaporates right away in the oven. So I'm wetting my hands with water and flattening the cookies a little bit so that they um, retain the shape that I want when they're finished. Now we need to bake it at 350 degrees for 8 to 10 minutes. I'll do 9 to start off and 9 minutes was just right for me. It looks like the cookies did spread a little bit so thanks baking soda. Now the recipe says to let them cool on the sheets for two minutes and then transfer them to the cooling rack. Um, usually when they say that it's because there's some residual cooking happening and the cookies will be a little more stable if you let them stay on the cookie sheet. After letting them cool a little bit longer, I decided to dig in. So you can see it's definitely cooked all the way, nice and um, completely cooked through. The, the type of flour does get a little bit gritty. Um, so you can see little flecks of chickpea in it. Um, but it was really good. 
Um, I will say it's a little dry, and I think that's because there's no egg replacer in here. So I would definitely recommend you use your favorite egg replacer instead of the water, and whether that's you, um, water and cornstarch or flax or whatever you like. So thank you so much for watching. I will make this again. I hope you enjoy it. Happy eating!